Hello, uh, thank you very much. So I will briefly descri uh, describe the main features of the IBC dataset. Um, so uh, to give you a bit of a perspective in cognitive neuroscience, we are typically interested to link uh, brain systems to mental functions by measuring uh, brain activity during the performance of uh, behavioral tasks. So. In order to achieve that, we craft experiments tackling a certain uh, psychological domain. Uh, so these uh, tasks, these experiments, uh, are basically a well-controlled sequence of operations that have to be performed by the participant during the acquisition, uh, and they are usually mediated by visual or auditory instructions. So indeed, a good experiment is specific enough to accurately isolate a brain process. Uh, nevertheless, this is very hard to achieve, and the typical is what, what happens is that uh, single uh, task fMRI studies are bounded by idiosyncrasies related to experimental settings or the structure of the task itself. So they do lack generality. Uh, and uh, usually at the best, what we can do is to link uh, brain systems to behavior. Uh, besides that, we are, we are also only able to map neural activity at the millimetrical scale. Uh, usually we do uh, three millimeters of resolution in fMRI. So the IBC uh, dataset tries to address these problems. Uh, so uh, because we do multiband imaging, uh, we can increase a bit the resolution and go to 1.5 millimeters. Uh, and in terms of uh, data set organization, uh, so it, it is, uh, it's organized in a task-wise uh, fashion, meaning that we collect many tasks per participant, uh, and this will uh, allow us to go a bit beyond and therefore link brain systems to uh, cognitive components shared by different subsets of uh, tasks. Um, although we have a limited number of participants, it, it's a fixed cohort, so they are coming many times to perform uh, the, the acquisitions. Uh, and meaning that we are allowed to minimize um, uh, sources of intersubject variability that are very much present, for example, in meta-analytic studies or mega-analytic studies. Uh, and everything is acquired in the same place, uh, so meaning that we are also um, um, uh, we can also minimize intersources um, uh, um, um, var variability related with the um, intersite variability. I'm sorry. Um, I, I also forgot to mention, but we do a temporal resolution of two seconds. Uh, and also we include other MRI modalities uh, like tractography, relaxometry, and radial diffusion. This is not a longitudinal study. Although it's a big study, it's not longitudinal, meaning that we don't uh, uh, systematically undertake, undertake re uh, repeated measurements of the tasks. So the first release is already out. It comprises 12 different tasks. So the RC tasks and the HCP tasks are already actually reproduced by in, um, from previous studies. For instance, the HCP uh, task stands for the Human Connectome Project Battery of Tasks. Uh, and uh, so all of these tasks cover a wide range of psychological domain. Um, going from low-level cognitive processes to high-level cognitive processes. Uh, I invite you to uh, go to our poster that will be presented by uh, Juan, my colleague, uh, and he can explain you in detail all of uh, these uh, tasks. So um, the first release is already available in the HPP knowledge uh, graph, um, and also in a public repository, uh, open Neuro under the data accession number of uh, 244. Uh, in terms of data organization, we follow the normatives of uh, BID specification. Uh, and everything about the first release is uh, very much reported on our first data descriptor paper published in Scientific Data. So in terms of uh, post-process data, so here I display the um, binary statistical maps uh, at a group level from uh, the main contrasts grouped by tasks. So this is a univariate approach. We uh, perform, we correct here for um, uh, multiple comparisons. We employ uh, FDR threshold of 0 0.05, although you can find the individual and threshold statistical maps in NeuroVault. 
um, under the, the ID collection uh, that you can see on the slide. Um, so this is the second uh, uh, set of, uh, of tasks. So in terms of the color scheme, um, so each cluster of activity refers to the contrast whose main condition has the same color. Um, okay, so here we can, uh, we have a quantitative assessment of the similarity of the, the contrasts um, uh, between RC, uh, uh, RC dataset and IBC and also HCP dataset and IBC. Uh, so basically we compute the correlation of the Z maps uh, for the corresponding uh, contrasts. And of course, uh, in the diagonal, we can uh, very much uh, conclude that we hint a good level of uh, reproducibility. Uh, so the data acquisition will go till 2022, sorry. Um, the final data set will have uh, 50 uh, acquisitions. Uh, future releases will come soon, tackling the visual, uh, um, uh, especially tackling the visual process uh, system, it will be the next one. And of course, the ultimate goal of the data set is to develop encoding models for cognitive map, uh, mapping uh, that can be implemented in a brain atlases infrastructure like uh, HCP. And of course, the, uh, one of uh, the major challenges that we want to tackle is basically the development of a cognitive ontology uh, based on uh, neuroimaging data. So I would like to thank um, the Human Brain Project for the funding, also the all uh, IBC volunteers that have been scanned for the commitment in this uh, long project, all of our uh, collaborators from the Cognitive Neuroscience uh, Lab, uh, technicians from UNIACT, all my colleagues from Parietal, and especially my supervisor, Bertrand Thirion, for the support. And I will just quickly would like to ask all the female neuroscientists present in this room to do a quick uh, profile in this repository that it's meant for identify and recommend female neuroscientists for conferences and, and other public events. And I will, be, uh, I will be glad to talk about also this project to everybody regardless of their gender. Um, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>